In this video, we'll calculate the volume of a torus, which is the mathematical word for a bagel shape. So we're going to calculate the volume of a torus, or bagel, whose shape is given by two parameters, big R and little r. So if we think of the bagel as being a tube of bread that's wrapped around, then little r is giving the radius of that tube of bread, and big R is the distance from the center of the bagel hole to the center of the tube of bread on one side. I'd like to think of this bagel as a solid of revolution. So I can create it by rotating a little circle around the y-axis. Now little r is the radius of the circle, and big R is the distance from the origin to the center of that circle. My cross sections for this solid of revolution are going to look like washers. So those cross sections are like slicing my bagel with horizontal slices. While this circle right here that I do the rotating with, that's like a bagel chip. That's like slicing my bagel with vertical slices. Now my washer cross sections they're thin in the y direction, right? They're stacked up. I have a bunch of washers that are stacked up in the y direction. So I know that I'm going to be integrating dy. And since my cross sections are washers, I know I'm integrating pi r outer squared minus pi r inner squared dy. Now, in order to find r outer and r inner as functions of y, and in order to find the bounds of integration, it's going to be helpful to have an equation for this curve for the region that I'm rotating. So this, this curve is a circle, and it has center at the point capital R, 0. The equation of a circle with that center is x minus capital R squared plus y minus 0 squared equals the circle's radius squared, or little r squared. The bottommost point of that little circle is at y equals negative r, and the topmost point is at y equals r, and so those are going to be my bounds of integration. y goes from negative r to r. To find r outer, that's going to be the distance from the origin all the way out to here. So when I'm right along the x-axis, it would be big R plus little r. But if my washer cross-section is a little bit lower, then it's not going to be all the way out to big R plus little r. It's going to be a little, little less wide. It's just going to go to this x value on this curve. So I need to solve this equation for that x value to find out what it will be. So I'm going to rewrite my equation as x minus capital R squared equals little r squared minus y squared. Take the square root of both sides. So now I need plus or minus the square root of little r squared minus y squared and then add capital R to both sides. Now, there are two possible solutions, right? There's capital R plus the square root of little r squared minus y squared, and there's capital R minus the square root of little r squared minus y squared. And those correspond to the x value on the outer part of this curve and the x part value on the inner part of this curve, which will end up being the inner radius. I know that r plus is going to be a bigger number, so that's got to be the outer radius, and capital R minus is going to be a smaller number, the inner radius. Let me write those down. So now I've got my integral set up, but I'm going to simplify a little to see if I can compute it. First, I'll pull up the pi, and I'll square out each of these other terms. So I get capital R squared plus 2 capital R squared of little r squared minus y squared plus the square root squared, which is just r squared minus y squared. And then I subtract the analogous term terms from the other piece. If I factor through the negative, I see that almost everything cancels out. And I'm just left with 
pi times the integral of 4 capital R square root of little r squared minus y squared dy. Let me pull out the 4 capital R because capital R is a constant with respect to y and this is what I need to integrate. Now there is a way to integrate this using a trig substitution but I'm going to think about it geometrically instead. If I look at the curve x equals the square root of little r squared minus y squared, that's going to be half a circle with positive x values. It's going to be the right side of the circle, x squared plus y squared equals little r squared. And so if I'm integrating dy, that circle, that's finding the area of this half circle, and that area is just going to be 1 half of pi little r squared. So therefore, my integral is pi times 4r times 1 half pi little r squared. In other words, it's 2 pi r times pi r squared. That's kind of interesting, right? The volume of my torus shape is exactly the area of this little bagel chip cross section times the circumference of the circle formed by the big radius capital R. This actually corresponds to an ancient theorem of Pappus, which says that for any volume of revolution, you can calculate its volume by taking the area of the cross section that you're rotating times the distance traveled by the centroid or center of mass. In this video, we used methods from calculus to find the volume of a bagel or torus whose shape is determined by these two parameters. We worked out that the volume is 2 pi capital R times pi little r squared.